standing here with the author, Tanya Moreland, who's got a great, fantastic book for young ladies, and I'm sure young men too, that has a wonderful message. Tell us a little bit about your book. The book is all about the message. It's a message to, well, to everyone, but of course it targets females, if you can tell by the look of the cover. But it's a message to help people understand that regardless of what society tells us, um, that you're beautiful always because God designed you. You are created by God and He doesn't make mistakes. And it's a message that's very needed by girls of all ages. So I wrote it because I wanted to give that message to my girls and then I wanted to share that message with girls of all ages to help them to remember that when they hear things by people, by things they see on TV or in books. So it's a message that I'm on a mission to get out there. Wonderful. Now there's some special characters that are inside of here that have been drawn inside. Tell us a little bit about those girls. These girls are actually, they were the models um, for the characters of the book. This is my oldest, a picture of my oldest daughter, Shelby, and my youngest daughter, Sydney, is in here also. And of course, their names are not in the book, but they were the models for the illustrators. So that makes it very special for us. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, I'm proud of you. Congratulations you on much. the book. I think it's wonderful. I do think that young children, even adults, need to hear that. So right. it's an amazing book. Hopefully, we'll see more of this in the future. And best of wishes to you on this particular book. Thank you. Thank All right. you. Thank you. Is this your first time at the book fair? Uh, it is, yeah, first time at the uh, Kentucky Book Fair. And uh, uh, the book came out late last year, but it was too late to come to the fair last year. So, uh, uh, so I submitted this year and got an opportunity to come this year. Wonderful, so. wonderful. Well, this is an amazing book. It's called Still Running. And we're standing here with the author, Nathaniel Northington. Tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about your book and what's your inspiration behind writing it? Okay, the book is about uh, 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 being the first African-American football player at the University of Kentucky and also in the Southeastern Conference. So the inspiration pretty much was that I, I just wanted to, the older I get, you know, I realized that other people need to know about, you know, what happened, what transpired, especially the young, younger players, uh, the younger uh, kids these days really are not aware uh, as to exactly what uh, transpired at UK, SEC. Uh, they kind of see the football today uh, and they may feel like that it's always been the way it is. Uh, integrated and, and a lot of African Americans playing, uh, but that's not true. You know, I was the first one, being another a gentleman by the name of Greg Page, uh, was my friend. He went to the UK at the same the same time, and unfortunately, you know, he uh, suffered a tragic injury uh, and died. So I want everybody to know about him as well, just to remember uh, uh, what happened. Uh, you know, how we were able to uh, uh, just you know integrate the SEC, integrate football at Kentucky. Uh, so the story needs to be told, so I want to make sure that was told. Wonderful. Well, you've broken a lot of guards, a lot of barriers, mm -hmm. um, and not just for yourself at UK, but also yes. for the people that came behind you. Right. How has that changed your life? Uh, well, it, it changed my life tremendously. You know, I realized that uh, it was only the grace of God that allowed us to do that, you know. And uh, so uh, I am a minister, you know, now, and I know that God was the one that really uh, 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 you know, allowed me to do that. It was, uh, it was destiny. You know, uh, he just really put me in that place at that particular time, and I didn't know what was going on at the time, but uh, I just knew it was something. You know, uh, there was a higher power that allowed me to do that, allowed Greg to to be there as well. Uh, so we're just glad that we were able to uh, do something that would help. You know, the entire society, not just in uh, uh, athletics, but also the entire uh, uh, South. Uh, the entire state of Kentucky, the entire uh, country, really, because football is a football and sports is a great, tremendous. Uh, uh, it kind of brings people together, mm -hmm. you know. So uh, they say that Sunday is the uh, 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 probably the most segregated uh, 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 day of the week, and football is probably on Saturday is probably the most integrated day of the week. So it makes a big difference. It really does. Yes. Yeah. Well, is this your first book? Uh, it is my first book. Uh, it is the first book. And uh, uh, so it's, it's, it's doing well, and I'm grateful for that. But just, you know, I know that, that God inspired me to do it, so I know that it's going to do great. You know, whoever reads it are, are usually inspired. Uh, not only that, but we're also going to be doing a, uh, uh, there's going to be a documentary coming out uh, 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 this, this coming spring. Well, in February, there's a documentary by CBS Sports uh, Network uh, about the integration of SEC. So, uh, I'll be in that too. All right, sounds good. Well, you all, we look forward to seeing that. Okay. And you all get out and check this book out. It's called Still Running, and it's by Nathaniel Northington. Thank okay. you so much for being on camera. All right, you're welcome. <laughs> My pleasure. Thank you. All right, I'm standing here with an author, Evelyn Christensen. Tell us a little bit about the book that you have here. 
I have a Kentucky puzzle book, and it has puzzles for ages 6 to 106, so lots, lots of nice variety. There are different puzzles, kinds of puzzles on every page, and every puzzle ties in with Kentucky. So it's a nice gift book for families, or it's great for classrooms, too. Wonderful, and I like that it's inclusive from age 6 to 106. That's wonderful, right? Right. Yes. Tell us a little bit about your book, Abba Conundrums. Now, you do, a, you do a lot of games, and tell us a little bit about this particular game. Okay, I'm a retired teacher. Math is my specialty area, and I love to make learning fun for kids and for adults. So the Abba Conundrum book comes with an abacus, and as long as you know how to form the numbers on the abacus, you can work on these puzzles. You have a secret number that you're trying to figure out, and you use the clues to help you figure out what the secret number is. All right, sounds wonderful. I like it. Now, you've written a lot of books, somewhere around 46 books. I have had 44 educational puzzle books published and seven math games. Wonderful. What, what got, what's your motivation behind your books? I just love to make learning fun for kids and for adults. Um, and it's just, I grew up doing lots of puzzles and games. There were six of us kids in the family, and we were always doing puzzles and games. So it's just a, a fun thing to do. Wonderful. Well, best of wishes to you here. This looks like an amazing gift set for someone for Christmas. So I hope you. it goes well. Thank you. The, the inchimals are also a wonderful thing for like three to six year olds okay. because they're, they're a set of 12 animals that uh, each one's graduated in inches and it comes with a write on wipe off book that they can learn to do adding and subtracting with. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, this is amazing. Congratulations to you and best of wishes to you on this new book that you put Thank out. You. <laughs> Thank you. I'm standing here with two authors that co-wrote this book, Mother and Son, and it's an amazing book. Tell us a little bit about the Civil War, Lexington, Kentucky. Since there were no great major battles in Lexington, we focused on the people who are from or who lived in Lexington for a time, including both presidents involved in the Civil War, with Jefferson Davis attending Transylvania University, and Abraham Lincoln's wife was from Lexington and visited in Lexington. Also, his hero, Henry Clay, was from Lexington and helped delay the Civil War a decade. And we explore upon uh, the various generals who are related to Lexington. We have eight generals buried in the Lexington Cemetery, um, at least one from the Union, but mostly from the Confederacy, including John Hunt Morgan. Uh, his whole family was fighting in the war, and multiple, you know, the brothers died in the war. A um, lot of information about the various people, but we don't go into too much depth. It's more of a primer, a quick, easy read, a good gift for people. Wonderful, wonderful. Now, do you all focus a lot on history books? Yes, yes. We really enjoy the research. I can put in 60 or 70 hours of research a week when I'm working on a project, and I really get into it and really excited about it. And then this book focuses a lot on Transylvania University, and my, my son is third generation transy student, so that was fun and exciting. Wonderful. Now, you've actually written a book yourself called Sarah's Courage. Yes. Now, tell us a little bit about Sarah's Courage. Sarah's Courage is inspired by the kidnapping of Daniel Boone's daughter, which is an event that made him famous all over the world. He spent three days, took some people with him, rescued his daughter and her two friends, and got them back. So this first part of the book is a novel based on that. The second part is read more about it. So you can read about the actual kidnapping, about Daniel Boone, about wildlife, and there are a lot of interesting but not well-known facts about Daniel Boone, such as he was born in Pennsylvania, not far from Philadelphia, and he was born in a Quaker family. Wow. Now, how did you collect your information, and how long did it take to research the information for this particular book? Years. <laughs> Well, I've always been interested, so I've had a lot of research accumulated over the years. And I like to go to primary sources, diaries, journals, letters, and that's really exciting. Plus, I learned nobody back in frontier days knew how to spell. <gasps> they just didn't care. <laughs> gotcha. So I saw one page that had buffalo spelled five different ways on one page. Wow, I bet that made your research very interesting then. Yes, yes. <laughs> Try spelling names when they're spelled five different ways. Gotcha. Well, best of wishes to both of you all. These Thank seem you. like wonderful books. Thank Have you, you all written any other books in the, in the past? 
I've had some children's books about disgusting germs and things. Okay, wonderful. Yeah. All right. These two are from the History Press. Wonderful. Well, thank you all so much for agreeing to be on camera, and best of wishes to you in, in, you. in the books that you've written. Thank you. Thanks. I'm standing here with author John Elliott, who has written a crime drama. Tell us a little bit about your book, On the Run in College Park. Well, College Park is where the University of Maryland is, and this is a book about four college students, one of which is an exchange student who, with a couple of other guys, is uh, running a scam charity, keeping three-fourths of the money for themselves, laundering it overseas and not paying tax on it. And uh, he's got a girlfriend who's an American-born Muslim girl named Nadira, who's rooming with a Christian girl, and they're trying to sort out how to talk to each other and um, then the uh, early in the book, the, uh, the three guys that are running this uh, scam are approached by a terrorist organization who's demanding to become a silent, a silent recipient. And uh, they, the three guys tell them no, and that's where the real trouble began. And then I won't tell you the rest of the story, I don't want to ruin it for the readers, but uh, that's what moves the story along. Uh, it turns out Ahmed, the uh, exchange student from Morocco, is, uh, becomes the enemy of the terrorists, an enemy of his former friends, and uh, that's why he's on the run in College Park. Uh-oh, and the rabbit hole just keeps getting deeper, right? Yes. yes. Wonderful. What's your motivation behind writing it? How did you, how did you come up with this, with the setting inside, in the plot inside this book? Well, it's a, I think it's a good story. It's also a story with a lot of meaty, a meaty elements between the lines of the, of terror and running from others. Uh, one is the story, the issue between uh, Christian and Muslims, how to get along and how to talk to each other. Um, there's also honor, uh, some issues about. Uh, 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 honorable. Um, conduct in in uh, in the face of terror, in the face of threats, uh, courage. So there's, there's some things in here to give you some a lot to think about. Do you ever find yourself inside your books, inside of any of your characters? In all my characters. Oh wow! There's a little bit of me in every character, because there's a lot of dialogue in a book, and a dialogue comes from my placing myself inside the uh, the mind of the character and that character in my mind so I'm creating each character's character from my own mind gotcha wonderful well <laughs> thank you so much for sharing about this book it sounds like a page turner so that's what they say all right well you all get out there and check this book out once again it's on the run in college park and it's with by the author john elliott thank you so much thank you i'm standing here with thomas davis who's written two books here today the devil likes to sing and also the christmas quilt <laughs> tell us a little bit about your two books okay the devil likes to sing is kind of a fable about the nature of uh, temptation and human aspirations, that is, what are you willing to give up to get what you want. A very different kind of book is The Christmas Quilt, which is set in 1942 North Georgia. Uh, it's about, it's, it's, it's kind of a, a, both a coming home and a growing up story of a young man who's, uh, well, a young boy who's becoming a man through dealing with his mother's, uh, grandmother's loss um, and his uncle coming home from Detroit. Um, two very different kinds of books, but both really about what it means to be human in many ways. Are there any personal testimonies inside of these particular books that you have here? No. No? <laughs> Sorry. Well, that's no. a good question. Hey, uh, right. I, I totally understand. You know, a lot of people write books based on their own experience right. or what they may go through. So oftentimes you see that with authors. Uh, well, oftentimes, and but what I've done with the books really is... In many ways, this book, for example, is based on a lot of my dad's stories, because he was, uh, he grew up in the North Georgia area in the 1940s, early 1940s, so um, it's not really about him as such, but it kind of draws on his experience. Same sort of thing with this book, draws on 
my own experiences in the Chicago area, for example, but it's not really about me as such. So, but just drawing on those life experiences to try to create a real scenario for, for the characters of the book. In both books, what is it that you would like for your readers to take away? Uh, from this book, it's really about uh, being satisfied with who you are in many ways. Uh, that is, coming to grips with who you are, what your gifts are, and being okay with that. In some ways, the, this, this book, though very different in its setting, is, is much about the same thing because it's about a young boy whose great desire is to leave where he's at, uh, but then in the end realizes what he has there at home. A so, great treasure. Yes. All right. Well, wonderful. Thank you so much for agreeing to be on camera, and best of wishes to you in, uh, you. in your book sales. Thank you. I'm sitting here with Sandra McLemore, and she's written a couple of sequels. Tell us a little bit about your books that you have. Okay, well, Christmas Hotel is set in Franklin, Kentucky. Not Frankfurt, but Franklin. It's a very small town uh, just below Bowling Green, Kentucky. It's set in 1941, right after Pearl Harbor, where this woman is only 20 years old, and her husband has perished at, at Pearl Harbor. And so she leaves, um, she leaves her town in the north, and she winds up in Franklin, Kentucky. And that's where the story begins, and I'm not going to tell you any more about it. you got to read it. <laughs> All right. Well, tell us a little about Christmas for Lucy. Okay. Christmas for Lucy is kind of a continuation of this story, and it's set in 1954, and it's set partly in Bowling Green, Kentucky, and Franklin, Kentucky. And you might notice the, the fountain um, of Bowling Green, Kentucky on the square. And it's about a little girl who's eight years old whose mama dies on her eighth birthday. And now she's, um, she's an orphan, and a stray dog comes and keeps her warm at the fountain. And then the story continues from there. All right, sounds wonderful. What's your inspiration behind writing the book? Um, I like uh, books that are inspirational, and they're about hope, and there is, uh, there's always a plan B, and let God take you through that plan B. Wonderful, wonderful. Now, how many books have you written in the past? Uh, five total. Five. So right. there's a third one after this one. It's Christmas Redemption, and it just now got released, so I didn't get a chance to bring it here. Gotcha. Well, best of wishes to you on all three of them. Well, they you. all sound wonderful. It's a perfect gift for the holidays, yes, it's it is. seeing that it's Christmas. Very inspirational. And it's also, we're also in Kentucky, so hey, books that are based in Kentucky that are also about Christmas sound like wonderful Christmas gifts That's to right, me, right? Agree. All right. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you so much for agreeing to be on camera. Thank you for asking me. <laughs> well, I hope you all are ready for our little racy love story. I'm standing here with the author, Gregory Peterson, and he's written a book called Open Mic. Tell us a little bit about this, this racy love story that you have here? Okay, well it might not be as racy as some fans out there like it, so I'll have that disclaimer, but uh, it might not be for all audiences either. Um, Open Mic is, um, tells the dark story uh, behind comedy and the tragedy really uh, behind the, the stripping industry, more about like, you know, how these, the women uh, see themselves. It also uh, compares and contrasts the two professions, you know, how similar they are. Uh, they both create a world that doesn't exist. Uh, they both hide behind the spotlight, and they um, also both reply. Um, I'm sorry, they both uh, need the approval of strangers for for survival. So I decided that this book had some legs. I would go out and actually try comedy uh, on my own to see how that works. Really? Now, how did your comedy. how did it go? Story. How did your com comedic career go? Well, I still still work a day job, okay. so <laughs> it was fun. I, I still have fun with it. Wonderful. Now, why did you choose a, a comedian and a stripper? Why those two together? Just because they seemed, you know, more similar than uh, than most people would realize. Gotcha. What would you like for your readers to get out of this book? If there was one big picture that you'd like for them to be able to take hold of out of this page, out of, out of the book, what what is it that you'd like for them to take home with them? Um, I'd like them just to see that there's, you know, I'd like them to see the heart behind it. Um, you know, certainly enjoy you know, the darkness, the depravity. Uh, perhaps not too much, my mom might be watching this. But uh, just, just to see that the heart, you know, how, how wounded some of the people are, you know, behind the spotlight. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, thank you so much for agreeing to share. Oh, no, thank and you. best of wishes to you on Open Mic. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> right.
I'm standing here with Linda Atkins, and we have a little bit of a crime drama here. Tell us about your book, Deadline for Murder. Deadline for Murder is the latest in the Hillary Adams mystery series. They're set in Louisville, Kentucky. She's a criminal defense attorney who represents those who are accused of the most heinous of crimes, murder. All righty. Now, you're a lawyer yourself. I am. All right, former so prosecutor and former criminal defense attorney. So, where do you find yourselves in these in this book? I don't. She's not my alter ego. We're exactly the opposite, but I love her. She's just she's vulnerable, but she's smart. She's quick. Doesn't suffer fools easily, and she's a winner in the courtroom. Wonderful. Now, how did you come up with this particular character? Is she someone else that you know? No, she's totally fictional. I was outside waiting for a hearing to begin, and and was jotting down some ideas and. Hillary Adams was born. So Hillary Adams is in each of the four books. Wonderful. Now, which one is your favorite book? If you had to pick one that you're, that's your favorite, that has your heart, which one would it be? Well, the last one's always your most favorite. That's closest to your heart. Gotcha. Which one did you write first? Absence of Reason, and then The Names Will Never Hurt Me, Politics, Can Be Murder, and now the latest deadline. Wonderful. Wonderful. All righty. So there are four books inside this trilogy. Oh, actually, that would make that. It's four. Yes, that's four. Wonderful. Well, are, are, will there be more to come? Absolutely. I think she has more adventures up her sleeve. Gotcha. Thank you so much for agreeing to be on, care, on camera. Best of wishes to you. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm standing here with Alicia Whitaker, and she has written a book called The Queen of Kentucky. I love it. Thank First, you. I love the illustration, and then two, I like the subtitle on it. Tell us a little bit about this book from a country cl uh, country girl to a country club girl wannabe. <laughs> well, Ricky Joe is 14, and she has grown up on a tobacco and cattle farm, and she's about to like go from a private school where she just has five other classmates her age to the big public school. So even though she's been from this town, she feels like she doesn't know everybody, right? And now she's going to try to fit in. Mm -hmm. So she ditches the double name Ricky Joe for her Christian name Erica because it has more swagger. Okay. You know, yeah. she um, uses her tobacco money to buy like new clothes. She starts sneaking Seventeen magazine inside the pages of her Bible. You know, <laughs> and she starts to change all the while not realizing that her best friend next door is dealing with domestic violence mm -hmm. and she kind of starts to realize what being a true friend is. Wonderful. Yeah. Where did the inspiration behind this book come from? Well, a lot of authors' first books are semi-autobiographical. Okay, right. <laughs> I grew up uh, in Cynthiana, Kentucky. I'm originally from Frankfurt, but I grew up in Cynthiana on a tobacco farm. And so I pulled a lot of inspiration from my hometown. But then as far as the character's journey and their plot, I just thought, it you know, a lot of kids move and they start new schools, and I just thought it'd be cool to kind of reach out to those kids and write about them. Yeah, it can be a daunting experience, right? Yeah. Well, let's talk about this book because okay. this book is hot <laughs> off the press. There's a lot of things going on about it. It's called